Hello, everyone. My name is Aubrey Vivant, and I'm an honors apprentice and content producer for the MSUM Planetarium. Today is our second webisode of Creatures and Cosmos. Our first episode was released last Monday, so if you haven't seen it and you would like to, or you want to check out any of the other content, please check out the MSUM Planetarium YouTube channel. Through the series, we're going to be looking at some of the strangest creatures that roam the Earth, as well as their celestial equivalents up in space. For today, we will be looking at Northern Hemisphere's uh, celestial bodies only, so you can find all of these on your own. We will be breaking all of our animals into four categories, things that fly, which was last week's episode, things that swim, things that walk, and things that either look or are mythological. Our first animal today is the Dumbo octopus. The name Dumbo Octopus is in reference to the Disney movie Dumbo due to the octopus's method of transport looking very similar to the movie Elephant. Unlike the elephant, however, these flaps are actually fins and not ears. There are 13 species which fall under the title of Dumbo Octopus, meaning that there is quite a large size range. The average is about 7 to 12 inches in length, or about the size of an adult guinea pig, but there have been octopus reported that are over 5 feet in length. Dumbo octopi live deeper than any other species of octopus, usually living at least 13,000 feet, or over 2 miles below the surface. Because they live so deep, they are safe from most predators, but they do have a few tricks if they are in danger. Dumbo octopi have been observed curling into little balls to blend in with vegetation on the seafloor, which is also just incredibly cute to watch. They also have the ability to flush their color darker or lighter, an ability to camouflage to their surroundings. There is a wide variety of color in the species, with vibrant purples, oranges, yellows, corals, and blue hues being common. The next one is actually my favorite animal. This is the mola mola, or ocean sunfish. Mola mola are the largest bony fish in the world, reaching 5,000 pounds and 14 feet in length. However, they are born at just one-tenth of an inch long, meaning that they grow over 60 million times their original size to become adults. The reason that they look like only the front half of a fish is a mystery. They have all the skeletal components to develop a normal tail. Mola Mola use fins called clavis to steer their way through the water, and they're quite slow and docile. The fastest they can typically go is about 2 miles per hour. They are also referred to as ocean sunfish due to their habit of floating themselves to the surface of the ocean to sun themselves in an attempt to regulate body temperature and allow birds to pick parasites off their skin. Despite their massive size, these fish are gentle giants and are known for being rather curious when divers and snorkelers are nearby, often getting very close to investigate. Our third creature today is the sawfish. Sawfish actually live in freshwater in the southern United States, South America, and Africa. This is partially why there are no videos for this portion, as the waters they swim in are pretty consistently murky, and I honestly think seeing them still is just as impressive. Their long nose that they are named after is covered in teeth and is used as both a weapon in capturing prey and a digging tool. The technical term for this snout is a rostrum, and the fish have been observed using their rostrums in a sawing motion to cut through their prey. Small tooth sawfish, the species we can observe in the United States, are about 18 inches in length and are considered to be endangered partially due to their rostrums getting caught in the nets of fishers. It is illegal to harvest or sell sawfish rostrums, but it is still an issue which is resulting in declining numbers of sawfish. Our fourth and final swimmer today is the blobfish. This fish was voted Earth's most hideous animal by the Ugly Animal Preservation Society based in Brighton, which I think is mean. They are deep sea fish that look very normal at their natural depth of 2,000 to 4,000 feet, but when they are brought to the surface, they look like this on the left. Because these fish live their lives so far below the water, their bodies are constantly under immense pressure. When they are brought up and that pressure goes away, the fish expand and undergo rapid tissue damage, essentially exploding. Because they typically live so deep into the water, blobfish have no bones and are essentially held together by the crushing weight of the water around them. There is still a lot we don't know about blobfish, as they are in dark water and are difficult to observe. Now, we are going to jump into Stellarium and look at our water creatures in the night sky. Our first constellation is Cancer the Crab. Cancer is a spring constellation that is best visible in March. If you know the traditional story of Hercules, Cancer was the crab that Hercules defeated as the second of his twelve labors. 
Cancer was sent to kill Hercules by Hera, but only managed to bite his foot and get killed in the process. Hera was obviously frustrated by the defeat and placed Cancer in the sky with only very dim stars as a mark of shame. Second is Pisces the fish. Pisces is one of the largest constellations in the sky and is best visible in autumn. You can see from the image here that Pisces is a constellation of two fish tied together at the tail. The story behind this strange combination is that Aphrodite and her son Eros. The story goes that mother and son were running away from a giant and came across a river. They called to the water nymphs for help and jumped into the river. In one version of the legend, two fishes came to the rescue and carried Aphrodite and Eros on their backs to safety. In another version, the mother and son were themselves transformed into fish. In an effort not to lose each other in the river, they tied their tails together. Now, I don't know about you, but this seems like quite a stretch. First of all, fish are slippery, so tying a rope around their tails would be tricky. Secondly, they were fish. How did they tie their rope without hands? Something is definitely fishy about this story. I'm sorry. Our last constellation for today is Delphinus. As opposed to Pisces, Delphinus is one of the smallest constellations in the sky and is best visible in early autumn. Delphinus the dolphin is one constellation that actually looks quite like what it's supposed to be. In Greek mythology, Delphinus was the messenger of Poseidon. According to the first Greek god, Poseidon wanted to marry Amaphrite, a beautiful nirid. Her suitor then sent out several searchers, among them a certain Delphinus. Delphinus accidentally stumbled upon her and was able to persuade Amaphrite to accept Poseidon's wooing. Out of gratitude, the god placed the image of the dolphin among the stars. So with that, our program for today is over. Here are the sources I used for today's episode. Next week, we will be looking at things that walk. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you'll stop in next Monday.